Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today, the moment you've all been waiting for. Well, maybe not all of you, but like a lot of you. And a lot of you have been waiting so patiently and eagerly and I'm so excited that today is the day we finally get to end God of War. That way we can just get right on to God of War Ragnarok. I mean, that's the plan, right? I'm really excited about it and I hope you are too. Please take a second to like this video and we'll get on to the last God of War video. Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time coming. It's gonna be great. Enjoy. Boy. Ooh. Good. Yeah, I really feel like I'm getting kind of used to this. Kratos should have held on to Atreus, not the boat. What happened to him? Something we did? No. Something else. The dead giant. Why would the serpent leave us here? Look! Oh! Freya. We can still trust her. Right? Until we know for certain. Keep her distance. The world serpent. What's happened here? We hoped you would know. You are far from home. I'm looking for my son. The two of you. You helped me see things more clearly. You do not know where he is then? No. But the woods and fields speak his name. I know he walks here in Midgard. When did you see him last? Long ago. Before you were even born. Why are you standing so far from me? What's wrong? Something's happened. There! I had a feeling that hurting the big snake would bring the two of you out in the open. Do you have any idea? Any idea at all? What you have cost me. No, I actually don't. My boy. Mother. I'm here. Don't run away. Oh, I'm not going anywhere. I know that you're still angry. I know that how you feel hasn't changed, but I, I want you to... How, how I feel? How I feel? And I want his trigger words. He feels nothing. I've spent the last 100 years dreaming of this moment. I've rehearsed everything I ever wanted to say to you, every word, to make you understand exactly what you stole from me. But now, I realize I don't need you to understand anything. I don't need you at all. Oh, back off, Kratos. This has nothing to do. This path you walk, vengeance. You will find no peace. I know. You... I'll deal with you later. But family first. Interesting. This again? Okay. Seems like it might be battle time. Question is, yes, um, he's got arrows in his face. What? Oh, Freya's doing the roots. I just really need to. No. I don't need your help. I can protect myself. Protect me. Stop 
elvish witch! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like really concerned about how much damage I am not doing. No, don't let me get hit. Oh, don't hurt Atreus. No, 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 no. You might want to turn away, boy. This won't be pretty. I won't let you hurt him. No, boy. Fine. Stop! No! Atreus! You're bleeding. Breathe, boy. Breathe! Not my blood. <clears throat> Oh, oh, that's how that finally comes into play. I've been waiting. I can feel this. Oh. Oh. I can feel everything. Oh, no! <laughs> He's vulnerable now. Game on, it seems. Um. You will not do this. Um. How did he come back to a life? What's going on? Is Freya trying to kill us? No. Do you hear the wind? We are moving. That arrow. Vulgar punch. The mistletoe. In the quiver strap, yes. The mistletoe harmed him. Freya said it was wicked. He's more than harmed. The spell is broken. He can be killed. I'm certain of it. It's all coming back. Oh, now. and now the spell of Mimir's memory is coming back. Two. Interesting. Okay. Oh, no, that's you Freya's cannot. magic. He needs to kill you. You can't stop me. No one can. Where is he? I don't care if he kills me. I will protect him. I will not let him die. Don't touch him. This will all be over soon. The thing about it, Freya, is like... Yeah. He just wants to kill everybody. So feel like you gotta... Wait, how is he full health again? Ah! Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot I have the punchy ability. Oh, I didn't punch him. Incredible. Wow, he's bad at dodging that thing. Woo, woo. I feel. I feel. Yuck. Freezing. <laughs> Yeah, like, he's really hurting us, though. Wow, why can't I, uh, why can't I, uh, hurt him? Why can't, oh, do I have to do a little switcheroodle? Okay. Let's try a little switcheroodle. Where's the thing? Where's the button for this? Okay. 
The switch of Rudel, she said. She totally made that word up. Let's see if this gets me anything. Not enough, it seems. Why do I feel like Atreus is the only one doing any damage to this guy? Ah! I do not have enough Spartan Rage for this event. Get back up there. And I'm doing wonderful. I never felt so alive. Mm. Please tell me you're not healed up again. What? What good is that, Freya, for anybody? Okay, don't stand there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then check, check out. Dodging? Not dodging, parrying. More! More! Show me more! Sucks that I have to aim that thing, you know? Really shouldn't have to. Just constantly moving. Constantly. Everybody climb. Here we go. Here we go. You don't have to do this. Stop him. This is so epic. Like, just the pure, like, visual imagery. Forgot how to do this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. 
between elements. Am I, can I not attack him? Oh, am I gonna have to switch between... Ooh, I'm gonna have a bad time if that's the okay. case. Oh, that missed. Nope, chaos please. This is really hard. He's gone. Not good. Trace really is doing all of it here. Switch. I gotta be better at parrying. I gotta be so much better. Oh, and he's gone. And I'm gonna die. He's gonna suck. Parry. And parry. And parry. There we go. No, 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 no. Ah. I'm trying to get the health stone. Walk. Dodge. Switch to Chaos Blades. Why? Ugh, sucks. Oh, okay, that worked out in my favor. We're getting close. I don't want to die. I want to get that health stone before I die. Run, run, run. Switch to Leviathan Axe. Get the health stone. Carry. Yes, okay. He's gone and he's gonna hit me! Yep. No, I can pray it. What is this? Chaos blades? Okay. Health stone. Not what I meant. Okay. And we're switching again. And we're switching again. I really don't want to die during this. I need that health stone. Have the wrong weapon. Oh, 
Like his affinity for language. It's like the first time we've seen it. Stop. Please. What is Kratos gonna do? Mercy or rage? Again. You will not touch her. I don't need your protection. Clearly you do, but okay. Alright, and that was character growth for Kratos. He didn't he didn't finish him. He chose the path of mercy. Shut the <laughs> Help yourself. Can you, mother? Uh oh. No matter what. Baldur's gonna try and kill her. Say, you won't. He won't stop interfering in my life. I was just trying to protect you. I w I've made mistakes. I know. But you're free now. You have what you want. Try to find forgiveness. We can build something new. No. 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 We can. Because I will never forgive. You still need to pay for the lifetime that you stole from me. I have paid. I have paid. But if that alone will make you whole, mm. if seeing me dead will make things right, I won't stop. I know. What? No, father! <laughs> I love you. He didn't. You did, Kratos. Rain down. Every agony. Every violation imaginable upon you. 
I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell. That is my promise. Oh, he saved your life. Boy. He robbed me of everything. <laughs> everything. You were just an animal. Passing on your cruelty and rage, you will never change. And you do not know me. I know enough. Does he? Boy. Listen close. I am from a land called Sparta. I made a deal with a god that cost me my soul. I killed many who were deserving. And many who were not. I killed my father. That was your father in hell. Is this what it is to be a god? Question like that? Are is you this kidding? What it represents? Sons killing their mothers? Their fathers? No. We will be the gods we choose to be. Not those who have been. Who I was is not who you be. We must be better. Well, guess we are the bad guys now. In her eyes, yes. But she could never make that choice. this journey while I still have strength. You don't understand. I know <clears throat> saving her was the right thing. But she seemed all evil at the end. Not evil. You killed her son, lad. Her son. The death of a child is not something a parent gets over easily. But he was gonna kill her. She would have died to see him live. Only a parent can understand. So you'd let me kill you? If it meant you would live, yes. Look, there was no easy choice. For anybody, brother. But I think we can all agree you did the right thing. The world's a better place with Freya in it. Just give her time, lads. She'll come around. Back to Tyr's temple, then. One last time. Hi. Jotunheim awaits. Why did Baldur say we cost him? Odin must have convinced him that following you to Jotunheim would bring his cure. Lies, I'm sure. Why did Mistletoe break the spell? Vanir magic is powerful, but its rules are slippery and elusive. I'm sure it makes sense if you're a witch. Oh, but it's also bloody tragic. Baldur was the greatest gift Odin granted Freya, the one thing she treasured from their marriage. She only hoped to spare him pain and spare herself loss. But such impulses can lead good parents to make terribly stupid decisions. What a doozy of a scene, right? Like... What a doozy. I don't, oh. It's so much. So, of course the scene didn't end when Kratos let Baldur live. Because we all know from Kratos' backstory that 
a previous version of him would not. Just because Balder troubled him, just because Balder threatened Atreus, just because Balder was annoying Kratos would have killed him. Because Kratos's moral compass is something that has been developing over time. That's what this game likes to examine. And so here we have Balder, who is clearly just tortured villain, absolute villain to his core. All he cares about is revenge. All he cares about is murder, getting what he wants, selfish needs, right? Kratos lets him live and says, I will give you a second chance. Do no harm, right? Balder obviously goes against that right away within a, a split second, goes to murder Freya so that she will pay for what she's done. And that is a very classic, like mythological thing, right? Revenge. You have done something wrong. Something wrong must be done to you so that you can pay for it, so that the odds are balanced, so that we're even. That's classic. But it, some members of our society know that kind of intrinsically to be wrong, right? Like two wrongs don't make a right is what we're taught from when we're kids. <clears throat> but that's that's what we're taught now. That's not something that was taught when these Greek and, and Roman and Norse myths were coming into being. The different things were taught. What goes around comes around is what was taught, right? But we still grappled with that because it still doesn't feel good. Even when perfect justice, which you can never dole out, but even when perfect justice is theoretically doled out, it still doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. And so there's something we have to grapple with in that. And so when Baldur goes to kill Freya as like retribution for doing something that in theory was supposed to be a gift, was supposed to be kind to him, um, Freya, a mother, who loves her son was like, okay. Ignorance doesn't excuse. I made a mistake. I hurt you. I'm sorry. I'll, I'd rather die. I'd, I want you to not only live, she says, but I believe she implies I want you to be happy. And if my death will bring that to you, I want you to know peace. That's all I've ever wanted as your mother, which is something I think so many parents understand and so many children can see in their parents when a parent has really done something wrong. But also we crave that, right? As, as, as children, we crave our parents saying, I know I've done something wrong and I would like to make up for it. And sometimes it's enough just to hear that, but Balder doesn't go there. Balder doesn't say it's enough to hear that. There, that could have been a moment of like an olive branch Right. That could have been a moment of like, you know what? That is what I needed. I needed to know that you're sorry. But instead, Balder goes, yep, time for you to die. <laughs> Not even doesn't even think think about it for a second, which truly places him in the category, in, at least in this story as villain. Right. So Balder tries to kill Freya. And for a long moment. We think Kratos and Atreus are just going to let it happen because Atreus goes, no, wait, we can't let this happen. And Kratos doesn't step in right away. So you can tell Kratos is really thinking about it, right? Like Kratos is thinking, maybe we should just let this happen. This isn't our business. He said that a lot throughout this game. And you also hear that um, in like The Witcher, in the Netflix Witcher. Geralt has this thing where he's like, not going to step in. It's not my business. But then there's that whole episode where it's like, is it enough? Is it okay to say it's not your business when you're like you're involved in it, whether you didn't ask for it or not? So there's this moment where, you, where Kratos doesn't step in. And you're like, oh, that's really interesting. But then Kratos does step in and not only stop Balder so that maybe they could talk about it. Kratos is like, this was your second chance and you actually failed the test. Goodbye. Meanwhile... Kratos has done something horribly, horribly, horribly wrong to Freya. And then he says something really interesting. He says, we have to stop the cycle. What cycle is he talking about? That's something that's very commonly attributed to the cycle of revenge. Because when someone does something wrong, someone does something in revenge, this person thinks, that thing was the first thing because they didn't see what they did as something wrong. So then they have to get revenge. 
And then this person goes, well, you've done something wrong again. Revenge, revenge, revenge. And we do this, this cycle of like back and forth hurting each other. So Balder clearly wanted revenge and only lived to seek revenge. Kratos says we have to break that cycle. We have to stop that cycle of revenge. What happens in that do good morality? Kratos just trying to make the right choice and stop the villain in his eyes. Freya says, you are the villain, Kratos. You've done something wrong to me. Now I'm gonna get revenge on you. Kratos, in trying to stop the cycle, perpetuates it. Which is wicked. Which is wild. I... I don't know what... what else to say about that. Other than it's wild. Like, in, like, a great juicy narrative kind of way. You know? Like, just so good. Just so juicy. Um, yeah. For this back and forth revenge thing, for every little detail of that scene to be so carefully placed so that every little morsel of intrigue can be pulled out of it. Every single point was like, oh, that was interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. From a story perspective, it just gets more and more interesting. Um, <clears throat> every, every line up the ante of the scene. Um, with Freya then swearing her revenge. Yeah, really good. Really good. <clears throat> Loved that scene. Interested to see what happens now. Like that scene was so intense and now we're just like back on a boat, us three boys, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like that's crazy. Like, everything changed, Come you here. know? You never told me what happened with the stonemason's son. Rimthur, son of Thamur. After completing his father's masterwork at the Great Wall of Jotunheim, he thought of nothing but making the Aesir pay for their crimes against the giants. Once, he longed to fight Thor, but tragedy had brought wisdom to Rimthur and cunning. He observed that Asgard's walls were half-built and shoddy, for no easier god could be bothered with such tiresome labor. So Finthor adopted the guise of an ordinary man and made the Aesir an offer. He would build them majestic new walls, and if he couldn't build them within two turns of the season, they would owe him nothing for his labors. And if he succeeded, he asked only for an audience with the goddess Freya. Odin agreed, knowing the task was impossible, but intrigued by the stranger. Arimthur made short work of it, of course. He had the benefit of his father's training and the aid of a magical stallion for fetching stones. Odin was not happy to find himself on the losing end of the wager, but he seemed to uphold his end of the bargain. Rhea was sent to meet the mason, and to her surprise, he wanted only to whisper something in her ear. That being done, he made his way out of Asgard. And when he found Thor awaiting him at the gates of Midgard, he knew he had been double-crossed. But he didn't care, because his plan was complete. It was? What did he say to Freya? Only she could say for certain, but I've had many moons to work it out. Harimthur knew that Freya loathed the Aesir, despite her marriage to Odin. And I believe he gave her the secret to Asgard's defenses. Some weakness he may have built in, structural or magical, which I expect will be exploited come Ragnarok when Surtur arrives to burn Asgard to ash, if not sooner. Ragnarok? Freya holds the secret to Asgard's walls? Interesting. Fascinating. Also, I feel like this whole mistletoe thing was just a little bit glossed over because Atreus literally asked at the end of that whole scene, 
Like, why did the mistletoe break the spell? And Mimir, the all-knowing, was like, magic works in mysterious ways, my boy. Hello? Come on now. Give us a real reason. Even knowing that all these things are made up, just make up a reason. Just be like, ah, oh, I had heard that mistletoe disables Vanier magic. I don't know. Azir magic? I, I don't know. Make it up. Don't be like, there's mysterious ways. <laughs> it's a mystery. Me, the all-knowing encyclopedia of this game. Can I say? What? <clears throat> but that's really my only complaint. Is everything that happened after that scene. And I appreciate, I do, I understand that some gamers, like, are not like me. They haven't, like, learned story analysis. But, like, the fact that that whole amazing, freaking beautiful scene happened, and then <laughs> Mimir, Kratos, and Atreus just, like, recapped it in, like, a friendly little voice. <laughs> to me, that's a little goofy. <laughs> but, like, I get why they had to do it. But, like... You know. All right, Brock and Sindri, what have you to say about all that just occurred? Nothing? Are you sure? Wait. What's it gonna be this Can we time? talk about the fact that I didn't use a resurrection stone for that? Big ol' battle with big ol' big bad Balder. Didn't even need to use a resurrection stone. Yeah. Yeah, it feels good. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything to do here, so I'm just gonna move on. Well, if things work according to plan... Mimir? <clears throat> don't. Don't get my hopes up for no reason. Don't do it, Mimir. Go ahead and lock in Jotunheim and we'll be on our way. Will we be on our way? Probably. Mimir? Don't say probably. If one more thing stops me, I give up. And we're never gonna finish this game. I hope this doesn't cause you to explode or anything. Oh, I haven't considered that. Maybe we should talk about this a bit more. Nope. Nah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Time for talking is over. Ready. Oh, that's unpleasant. Seems unpleasant. Now, boy. I like how Atreus just knew what to do instinctively. A word, please, before we continue. No more words, Mimir, please. Just let us go. Listen, the last thing you two need up there is a decomposing heat ruin in the moment. Why not I wait for you here? This is between you and the boy. Oh. True. But if someone wants to fight. My lady sifts soft, perfect sloshers. You done did it. Sorry. We had to see this. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Fine, damn it. Fine. Watch the head till we return. I can do this. No, no he no, can't. can't. Oh. Okay. 
ready. Come. Oh my gosh. I'm so curious if this is really gonna happen. Highest peak in all the realms. It's awfully white here. Okay. Am I supposed to be walking forward? Oh, just slightly walk forward. Okay. I think that Look, was on me. We're on the giant's fingers. I can see the highest peak ahead. Right over there. We did it. We did. What are you doing? I have nothing more to hide. <sighs> Can we go now? We're so close. Boy. The ultimate show of trust. You know, earlier this stream he said, I trust you, Atreus. And I was like, oh, it's unusual. He's not said that before. But now here he's doing something that shows he trusts him. Because at the very beginning of the game, I think Atreus said, you know, can I? And Kratos was like, no. You're not ready. He was constantly saying, constantly saying in the beginning of the game, you're not ready, you're not ready, you're not ready, you're not ready. And Atreus had to be like, well, when am I gonna be ready? It took all of this. <laughs> and it's symbolic too. That music, by the way, when the wraps around Kratos' arms just floated off, such a gorgeous moment. That whole moment spoke of the freedom of not having to hide anything anymore. Because it, it is a weight. It's a, it's a weight on you when you have to hide who you are. And being able to just float. It's a beautiful feeling. And it was displayed gorgeously there. Hmm. Boy. It's nothing. I just thought I'd hear voices by now. Hello? Anybody here? Why, Carval? 
these faces. What if this is all the giants that got out of Midgard alive? Not really many at all. What is this place? They must have all come through here when they left Midgard. What was left of them. Odin and Thor, ruining everything for everybody. How does that explain what this writing is? Are we gonna get a lore thing? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Midgard was a dream of what could be if we shared and collaborated. Jotnar, Aesir, Vanir, Elf, Dwarf, and mortals, most of all. It was beautiful, but not everyone is capable of sharing. Some believe anything uncontrolled is savage and threatening, and so we were mocked and tricked and used and then slaughtered. Odin and his tribe were barred from our realm, but it was not enough. The wrath of Thor and his terrible hammer have thinned our number in Midgard to the brink of ruin. There is no option but to withdraw, while yet any live to do so. Odin and Thor have, would have killed all the giants if they could, and they got away with everything. So that's um, Atreus's commentary there at the end. Where are they now? The giants came back home so they could survive, but I'm not sure they did. I should feel them, but I don't. This place is dead. What happened to them? Why'd mom send us here? One question is answered and two more take its place. Why did mom send us here? Oh, who's the guardian? Hmm. I bet this area right here hits really hard if you are a refugee. <clears throat> We foresee Midgard's fate, overrun a second hell. Neither Odin nor his dead may reach Jotunheim. The ways must be shut. The serpent and the guardian remained. They alone shall keep our hope. When doom befalls the indestructible, only then shall the guardian return. Until then, we await a better world, one without fear, without greed, without war. We wait for deliverance and justice. We wait for a champion. We will wait for word that gods grow good. Hope that world gets here soon. I don't know if gods will grow good anytime soon. When doom befalls the indestructible, only then shall the guardian return. I wonder if Tyr is the guardian. Because Tyr, you know, kind of protected the giants and the way to Jotunheim. So I wonder if like Tyr was the guardian and then when doom befalls the indestructible, indestructible I assume meaning Baldur, only then shall the guardian return being Tyr. So, I mean, unclear, not sure interpretation, but my best guess. That's an interesting reaction to Atreus specifically. That looks like the Leviathan axe. It's smaller. Look. That must be She's the arguing with a bunch guardian. Of arguing though. She new giants that's us the first time we met the world serpent but how and our fight was balder but that just happened wait they knew everything that was going to happen the dragon in the mountain, the stone mason, all these drawings. This is our story. No. Uh oh. This is your story. But what does it all mean? 
that I was not the only parent with secrets. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you didn't know. She was a giant. I'm a giant. Why didn't she tell us? She sent us here knowing we would find this. But why not just tell us the truth? Her mother would have had good reasons. Kratos would say Boulder that. He was never sent to fight <clears throat> me. He was tracking her all along, not knowing she was only ashes. Interesting. If she had a plan for us, I trust it. Whatever it is. Besides, she hasn't been wrong yet. You gonna Come uncover on. the last panel? We're so close to the end now. Yes. Yes, we are. What is that? What is that? What was that? What? What did I just witness? What was that? Okay. I'll have another look at it when I watch the VOD, I guess. Obviously Atreus with the golden um, backpack or quiver, but I don't, don't know what I was seeing. Look, it's Mother's. She was here. She saw every step we took before we took it. Like she was always with us. Aww. Watching over us. Leading us home. Let's finish it. Here it is. Father? No. We do it together. Son. There's nothing for us here. Come. So, I get that mother was a giant. 
which makes me part giant and part god. And part mortal. Right. I guess there's just one thing I don't understand. My name on the wall. The giants called me... Loki? Loki? That's the name your mother wanted for you when you were born. She must have called you that to her people. But why? A question for another day. Let us go home. Interesting. Guess it all makes <clears> sense, though. <throat> Why she want to end up here? Be with her kind? But did she know it was going to be like this here? Is this what she wanted us to see? Did she want us to tell the people? Or keep the secret? I... do not know. So what should we do? I trust you to decide that. Oh. So... Why'd you want to name me Atreus? I know it can't be for a god. <laughs> no. He was a soldier. A Spartan. A great warrior? All Spartans are great warriors. <laughs> we trained from birth. Our lives were discipline, duty, battle, and death. Life was grim, and we greeted it grimly. Mm. But Atreus of Sparta was unlike the rest of us. He wore a smile even in the worst of times. He was happy. He inspired us to hope that though we were machines of war, yet there was humanity in us. Goodness. When the day came for him to lay down his life in battle, his sacrifice saved countless others and turned the tide in our favor. I carried him home on his shield and buried him with all the honors of Spartan custom. His memory was a comfort in dark times. Wow, you actually told a good story. <laughs> <We are missing. laughs> I love this way of doing the credits, too. Um, I understand if you want to go home, but I bet there are still some corrupt developers out there that can be set free. Some other help you do. Maybe helping people was part of why mom sent us out here, too. I mean, what would Atreus of Sparta do? And what would Loki do? Huh. That's a weird name. I'm glad we went with yours. See, I'm not, not super up on my interpretation of Norse mythology. But I know the Marvel versions of those names. But I- What? What is Mimir's head just doing on the ground? Am I glad to see you? I've reached my limit for dwarven charm. They just what left you there? there? They took an uncomfortable number of measurements and then proceeded to bicker about the weather. Where do you want us to take you? How about the warm confines of anywhere bloody else? Fair enough. Return to Midgard, I should warn you. More time has passed than you want to realize. The snowfall that began when you slew Balder, it's become something else. The stuff of Odin's. Odin's the coming of winter. Not just any winter. The great winter to span three summers. And when it's done, Ragnarok begins. Ragnarok? From snow? Aye. Snow. Lots more snow. And then the end of the bloody world. In that approximate order. Another prophecy. I feel like all snow is the end of the world, honestly. This for a hundred more winters at least. You've changed something. I'm telling you, it's Fimble winter. I can feel it in my scroll. Rock? This is the big one. Stop saying that. 
Oh, you're making me very nervous. It was bound to snow sooner or later. That ain't just snow, and you know it. It's the end times. How dare you make me the voice of this? Not just discussing the weather. Bit of a cold snap lately. What he means is, Fimble winter's upon us, boys. The winner to end all winners. I can feel it in my school. Y yeah. We heard. We heard. So, if you're heading home, try to keep moving, and also, to not die. Or, if you're not heading home, same advice. Fair enough. Let's see. I don't remember where home is. It's the wild woods. Yes. I knew that. Oh, man. The tower ate the oh. Unity Stone, didn't it? I wanted to fly again. Yes, that's a terrible pity. Nope. Amir, what else did the serpent tell you when you spoke? Kind of sounded important. I'm sure it's nothing. He just said the boy seemed familiar to him. Me? That's impossible. Don't I quite agree. Unless, perhaps, he refers to something yet to be. It is said that when Jormungandr and Thor battle at Ragnarok, their clash so violently shakes the Tree of Life that it splinters, casting the serpent backward through time, even before his own birth. What? That is madness. Well, I did say not to concern yourself. Oh, it was so close to say that is madness in this game from that character and to not continue with this is Sparta. Come on, missed opportunity. Truly. We're finally home. Feels like a lifetime ago. Bit drafty maybe. It's a right improvement over having tree bark in your tadger. What? Time to rest. I'm gonna sleep through winter. Supposedly this winter is gonna last three summers though, so it's gonna be a really, you just let it, it's so drafty. What a drafty house, I wouldn't wanna live here. Okay, this'll do. Sleep. Way ahead of you. Oh, I feel like Kratos just rolled onto Mimir. <laughs> Years later. What's that? The ball. Seems like a Thory type. Oh boy. That was intense. I have, I have so many thoughts. Oh, it's not over. Only a dream. But it felt different. It felt real. It felt like the future. Then we will worry about it tomorrow. Today, there are still things we can do. Come. It wasn't over. I thought it was over. I muted it. Is it over now? What happens when I walk outside? Nobody's attacking us. Is it over? Okay. So many thoughts. So many feelings. Um, very intense. 
So, okay. I love that it started the way that it ended. I love that. I love that a stranger comes to our home and surprises us. And the fact that it was kind of like a vision of the future explains why Atreus hadn't aged in the vision in the vision. I don't know if it necessarily needed the like years later sort of title page. I don't know if they needed that to like have some sort of cut, even though the whole rest of the game had been a seamless no cut experience. Um, something like that. But um, such a touching moment for Kratos and Atreus to have finally at the peak of the mountain, at the highest peak in all the realms. And we knew that the piece that was missing was Faye's involvement. We knew that piece was missing. And there were like no breadcrumbs, really. As far as I remember, there were no breadcrumbs about why Faye had wanted that after all that time until the very, very, very end. And then there's this huge reveal about Atreus and about her. So I wonder if like maybe Faye was the guardian and not Tyr that was mentioned, or maybe Atreus is the guardian. But I mean, either way, like Atreus clearly states like all the giants are gone. And it's like, well, not all the giants are gone. You're still here. Um, and I wonder like how that's gonna play into the sequel. I wonder, like, we we did get a sense of, like, Atreus' godlike powers as far as his eyes start glowing and he has this, like, language affinity and he could, like, call the world serpent to him. Well, and maybe that is kind of related to his, like, giantness, too, that he's, like, part giant so he could call the world serpent because the world serpent is a giant. I'm not really sure. But... We also have Atreus's like, hearing voices thing. And we didn't... We didn't quite figure out that puzzle that wasn't like quite explained i might have missed something but as far as i know atreus ap approaches jotunheim and is like i kind of expected to hear voices but i don't and we don't really know why that is um the fact that like the game is over and done with and i'm still like very engaged with like a few mysteries is really great um, and it's very exciting. We hadn't really gotten any of Thor in this. We had gotten lots of like th around Thor, Magni, Modi, Balder, Odin, but we hadn't gotten really any of Thor in this game. It seems like Thor might have something to do in Ragnarok. I don't know, um, but I am really looking forward to playing Ragnarok and um, I love everything about this game. It was incredibly, just to sum it all up, I guess, just incredibly adventurous. And I think that's one thing that games capture better than so many other forms of media because they're like taking you on the journey too and you're active and engaged in it. Like it just felt like, like I feel like an adventurer. Like I went into the belly of the world serpent, you know? Um, very like creative and imaginative in a way that you don't expect from the God of War series because God of War is is very like heavy and morality and the gods and epicness but i feel like this with the addition of atreus really had a level of fun and levity and brock and sindri brought in just a different flavor and color like to be fair i didn't play the previous god of wars so i only know what i have seen of it through other people um so it might have had those moments too don't get me wrong if it did but I feel like this game, it really, it was, it was epic, but it was also bright and fun and had that kind of like contrasting flavor that I thought was just really, really great. Um, because then you get to appreciate the epic moments all the more um, because it's not too heavy handed. It's not like the game doesn't take itself too seriously because that's not what I mean by that. It just means it has enough contrast to really feel alive. This game really feels alive and you feel that when you play it, which I love. I love that this became a story about about parenthood and at the same time, inevitably, childhood, because that's something we we've all been through. We've all been children. We all have our own 
opinions and experiences and memories that we bring to a story like this, where you see the relationship between a father and son who have nothing but secrets, who have who have so much hidden between them and so much like so much of the beginning of the story was about the relationship between father and son being about like strength and preparedness. And we're not going to talk about anything we don't have to talk about that's not related to our survival. Um, and, and, and the journey not only of grieving and traveling with the ashes of their dead wife and mother, but also connecting with one another and not connecting with one another through the grief directly, but connecting with one another on a journey that was prepared for them by Faye, that was inevitable. Because interestingly enough, the journey when you're grieving isn't about the person you lost. When you're grieving, the journey is within you. And Kratos and Atreus were on separate journeys when this began. But by the end of it, they were on the journey together. And they grew together because the journey forced them to come together or don't survive. Because of the way the narrative is crafted, Atreus wouldn't have lived to see the end of this game if Kratos hadn't told him who he was. So Kratos had to lift those layers of repressed facts and memories and who he was in order to face who his son also was, even though he didn't want him to be, which enabled Atreus to become who he was already but didn't know and lifted that sickness from him. So the narrative is crafted in a way that forces them to lift those those lids on those feelings or die, which is really, really, really interesting. And done in a way that I didn't feel was heavy handed because at no point did they explicitly state, we don't have feelings, we strong, we gods. No, it was like, it was just woven. It was woven into the story. And it isn't until after that you realize that Kratos and Atreus don't have any more secrets between them. They still might for the sake of the story later on. There is a sequel after all. But for this particular journey, everything came out that enabled them to have a successful journey through the game and through grief and healing. But also at the same time, there's all these different threads of whatever all the other gods are doing. There's the story of Freya as a mother and Balder as a son. And when Balder says the lines like, you never stop interfering in my life, every child has been there. Every child gets that feeling. We, we experience two different sides of parenthood and childhood through Atreus and Kratos and Freya and Balder, which is really, really, really interesting. This mother, who just wants the best and who interferes to a fault because she loves so much and the child that just says, I need freedom. I need space. I need you to leave me alone. You have hurt me. You have wronged me. You have robbed me in your love. That's like a that's like a crazy thing to think about. And so you have these like two parenthood stories that are kind of woven in through throughout and and it's it's revealed in just really, really interesting ways. So I love that. I love all of that. Um, obviously, combat's super good. So fantastic on that end. Super fun. Very engaging for someone who doesn't play games for combat. I thought it was an absolute riot. I thought it was a blast. What else can I say? It's a good game. I'm glad I played it. I'm glad I finished it. You know, when I played Final Fantasy 15, there was also kind of a break in the middle where I like didn't play the game and then I finished it all at the end and thought, wow, the whole payoff of this game is at the end. Like everything is just build up until the end. 
And if you don't play the end, none of the rest of it makes sense. I didn't feel the same way about this game. With this game, I felt like the entire game had meaning, had moments, had ups and downs, had arcs. But the end really brought out a conclusion, but not all the payoff, if that makes sense. So, hmm. Good stuff. I think really good stuff. Well, that's it. We officially finished God of War. It's been such a long time coming and it was super rewarding even after all this time. You know, I, I made sure after this really long extended break, after Remake came out and all that stuff, I completely replayed this game so that I could really get every little detail so that I could really remember everything that happened from the very beginning of the game. And I'm so glad I did because every single little moment was so carefully crafted in this game that if you forgot even the tiniest little tidbits, uh, you, you did kind of miss something. And the game is still fun even if you don't remember every little detail. The game is still worth playing, but knowing that every single line had value and importance to ultimately that ending. So good. I loved it so much. There was so much to love, and I know I'm not alone in feeling that. So please let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you thought of my playthrough. Let me know what you thought of my kind of like summary of my thoughts and feelings. Um, cause I want to talk with you about it. This is a game that deserves to be talked about. Um, but please do be mindful not to spoil anything for God of War Ragnarok, even in little hinty hints. Um, because I am really excited to play it and that's definitely coming next. So stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for coming on this journey with me. Holy moly. It was so fun. Ah, so good. So what's up next? God of War Ragnarok, obviously, but we still have The Last of Us Part 2, which I absolutely am not forgetting. I am not abandoning. I will come back to. We also have Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, which is very, very exciting for no reason at all. Um, but then as we were kind of talking about it on stream, there's also Life is Strange True Colors that I really want to play. There's also... Um, uh, Final Fantasy 7, the original playthrough that I want to return to. So all of that's kind of roiling, boiling around and is is hopefully going to be coming to fruition soon enough. I know, I know you're all aching for more. I know, but I'm, trust me, working as hard as I possibly can to get you as much content as I possibly can. And I'm even bringing in help where needed. So thank you all so much for your support. I literally could not do this without you. And I wouldn't because... I live to just make you smile, make your day a little bit brighter. I hope that today's playthrough achieved that in some way, shape, or form. I love you all so much. I say that and I mean it. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. So that's all. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. Share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too. And please remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the next playthrough, whatever it may be. That's all. I love you all. Bye!